Daniel, okay. tell my audience who you are and what you do. Okay, my name is Okafor Daniel, and I'm the founder of Furnaces Readers Club, one of the fastest growing club in Africa. Um, we are a hub of visionary leaders, and we believe in raising people that will become leaders and um, transform the society and attain global relevance at large. So the way we do this is by creating a knowledge-based environment where we expose people to superior knowledge, okay, that um, calibrates their mindsets and helps them to think differently, therefore to act differently and to get more superior results than they get before. And I've been doing this for over three years now and um, we've had tremendous testimony so far. I'm also a digital marketer mm. and uh, a personal brand strategist where okay. I help um, people and personal brands, right? And um, also corporate brands as well to leverage the internet space and um, to showcase their works and what they do in the online space. So it's okay. just a short recap of um, what I do. Yeah. Wow. So you guys want to raise transformational leaders okay so how 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 do you did you get to come up with this idea of helping people to learn by reading what see the, the, the reason i'm asking you that question is this most africans don't read Definitely. Okay, and and that's why I am I have you uh, talking to me today, because I've been trying to encourage young Africans like you to read, and I've had a lot of pushback. They tell me all manner of stories why they don't read, and some of them is that why should they read? Why should they read the, the, the things that the West writes? All manner of things. So how did you gather those people who actually want to read? I'm, I'm interested because I want to use your testimony. I want to learn from it. Also to encourage other, other people around me who I get I contact frequently to read because I, I I know reading is very vital. See, we are not we cannot be everywhere. We can't experience everything. Okay. So we can experience more things by reading the experience of the people who actually experienced it. So how did you how did you start this? All right, um, you, you're very correct when you said Africans don't read, and that is a major problem, actually. Um, the reason why I believe that Africa can be transformed through knowledge is because I'm also a byproduct of one who have been greatly transformed through superior knowledge. So I knew how my life was. I knew where I was okay, in the status space. And um, I started my reading journey some years before I got um, admission into the university. And I just exposed myself to books on, you know, spiritual books, books on personal growth, you know, business and all that. And I was just reading. But one thing I observed was that, first of all, my thinking mode changed. The way I relate to people changed. And it got to a point where I was just myself, but at the same time too, people who were around me that didn't evolve, found it difficult to still relate with me. Mm. And my eyes were now um, open to more opportunities around me and all that. And in a short time, my life experienced a tremendous shift in a, in a very short time due to this knowledge. I was applying them and I started having tangible results, both in my finance, right? In even my spiritual life and all way around. I started being the leader and the person I've always got to be, true knowledge. So one day I sat down and asked myself, okay, if knowledge could do this to me, what would happen 
if many are exposed to this same knowledge. That's been a thought in my mind. I do get my friends to read books once in a while, and so it's always a struggle. Until I was working one day, I think I was still in school in a um, 12th level, and um, just dropped to my, my mind. I believe it was by the Holy Spirit, and was like, started with that scripture. I was like, wow, this sounds good. And at that point, I didn't know any club anywhere, right? I didn't know anyone. I just know it online, but I don't know any club anywhere that do what I was doing. So I just called like two of my friends, and I was like, can we start a club? They were like, wow, that is so nice. So since I was just new in the industry, I had to send them to go and research and see other readers clubs around and observe them. But when they came back, I was shocked with their discovery. They were like, they couldn't find up to two readers club around. And the ones that they, they saw was not even functioning. I was like, wow. So we have to just become creative in our strategy. And uh, it was meant to be, to be an offline community, but that was when the COVID struck. Mm. And it was so timely. During the COVID, I was just waiting for the COVID to be over so that we can resume in school. But it was getting too long. And one of my admins was like, why can't we just start something online for now while we wait for the COVID to be over? And that was it. Our first meeting was a blast. Okay. Wow. We were growing from hundreds to hundreds to hundreds. And not just that we are growing in number, is that people are actually reading. Because how the community is designed, like um, people don't because of the feel that reading is, is boring. Yeah. We have to make reading look interesting. We have to emphasize the value of this thing. We have to share the pages. Okay, you can read 10 pages today, we oh share today, God. you know, and all that. So while we're doing that, even the, the, the ones who, let me say, hated books per se, mm. started catching up. And they were like, wow, this is what I've been missing. And beyond just that, they started improving. I remember we, we have a lady from Jamaica. She wow. is the mother of, of seven. And she was in the class. She was like, this club had helped her to start a business. I started doing it because she, she read the book, um, I think the 10X Rule by Grant, Grant Cardone. And that book helped her improve her strategy. She started a business, was able to, to sustain her and her children. And we have had so many mind blowing testimonies from young people who came to Lamb Light and started doing well because of this knowledge. So that is where we began, and that is where we are now. I was still going through that journey. Wow. Fantastic story. Yes, so what's the, what's the size of, of your club? All right. We are over 5,000 at the moment. woo Yeah. Over 5,000. Yes. Wow. wow. Yeah. And yeah. that is just for the online community. Yes. Because once in a while we do go for outreach and still establish the club in, in schools. But just the online space alone, we are over 5,000 and we're still growing. Okay. Well, what you guys, you, guys, you guys have a name. What's the name again? Okay. Phronesis Readers Club. Okay. So do you, do you have a page online or on, on social media where people, people can, can go and... Uh, experience the group yes yeah so basically we are on all stranger platforms okay. but um our activities take place mainly on our facebook group and also our okay. whatsapp group so if you search for francis readers club and um, francis readers club on linkedin facebook and instagram you will see our page but to join our group you have to search for francis readers and writers group on facebook okay Furnaces yeah. Readers and Writers Group on Facebook. That's our hub. Yeah. Then um, on, on WhatsApp, once you get there, you'll see a link where you can join our WhatsApp group. And um, these two platforms, Facebook and WhatsApp, and also on our Twitter space as well. Okay. Where our major activities um, take place in. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So I know that... Uh, your work has been recognized by other great leaders and organizations. So tell, tell my audience about your recent awards. Okay. Um, 
that is really an, an interesting question. Uh, okay, when I began doing what I was doing, um, mm. honestly, I didn't really know that I would get recognized as I am today, and I've seen the process so far. Um, but so far, I've had so many awards, but just mention a few um, that really got to me was the JPI Leadership Award, okay, where I was um, given an award on, on, on leadership. And um, it was really an honorable event. Okay, we had um, Peter Obi, uh, the ex governor of, of um, Anambra State, there. Wow. And, the... you know, Pat Uto, and even um, Jami Padrewell himself, and other great speakers were there. So, you know, when I was there and I was honored, as I was getting the award, you know, I just recalled and recapped how I, where, I was, where I was, how I began, and where I am today. So um, the recent one was that um, last week I got an invitation from um, NTA. I don't know oh. if you know NTA over here. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So Nigerian, uh, I'll, I'll Nigerian uh, television television authority. authority. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be in an interview with them tomorrow. Oh, still in okay. Regard. Okay. So you would have, you would have done it before I post this. Uh, this podcast, <laughs> yes. Okay. No, it, it's still fine. It's still okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. So. Wow. And and so many others. Man, for yes, for sir. for you to be recognized by these organizations and individuals who are doing great things themselves. Right? I mean, hey, for you to, to be recognized in a space where the recent. Uh, presidential candidate was is huge. It is huge. Congratulations. See, Thank you. That, 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 tells, that, that clearly tells you you are doing something which people recognize as very, very important. See, I will tell you, maybe because I'm old, Okay, and you are young and you can relate with people of your age. Okay, see what you have achieved to be able to gather thousands of people to do this huge thing. See, I say, I say it's huge because I know it's huge. See, recently online uh, on Facebook, there was a video of a lady, an African lady, who was complaining about the way our educational system was that where in, she's, she, uh, I think she's, she's late now. She's, uh, she was, the way I, I saw her, she was at, at least in her late 60s or or, or 70s when she posted, when she made that video. And I, it's, it's not a, a recent video, but it was posted recently. And uh, she was saying that, oh, that we're encouraged to read books of other cultures and we were not, we're not in, encouraged to read things about Africa, okay? Okay, that's that may have been true because of colonialism, he, he said. Okay, that may be true, but I just commented, okay, well, now we don't have colonialism. Now you can read anything you want. Okay, even those things that our for, former colonial, colonial masters didn't want us to read. That was all I said. I will tell you Today, I still get messages on that post, on that comment I, I made. At least mm. 80, 85% of the comments was abusing me. Just because I said, now we can read anything we want. Abuse for telling you that you can read anything you want. Kind of people who 
do, who do things like that, to me, I, th- I see them as they have blocked their mind about reading. Exactly. They have blocked their mind about reading. And they will blame everything that doesn't work in their lives It's always about somebody else. But like you said, you started reading and you started applying the things you are reading and your life started changing. That tells me, see, I'm a reader. Like you see behind me is a shelf of books. See, I have books everywhere in this room I'm, I'm sitting, okay? In the last three months, I've read maybe 20 books, okay? I read all the time. If I step into my car, I don't play, I don't put on the radio. I read, I listen to my audio books. That's what I do in my car. Okay, and I've done that since for the last nine years. Okay, so the point is this. We, as Africans, we are behind in development. And for us to develop, individuals need to develop, okay? And gather different ideas about what to do in their own personal lives. And then they can also use those ideas to do something that will impact their community. Sure. But mm. if people refuse to read, where would they get their, those ideas? That's what Absolutely. we need to do. Yes, we need to encourage people to read. But when people refuse to read, when people abuse those who encourage them to read, where are we going? So what do you think we can do? What, what do you think we can do to encourage more people? Even those, I mean, I don't know if you, if you have the answer, but you have done something that I haven't been able to do. So I'm asking you. Okay. Um, I was about to answer to the latest comments. What you just said exactly was what I had to say. Okay. Okay. So maybe I'll just keep that. I don't know on it much. But... Yeah, in Africa, we are also we are doing is not just to achieve personal success, mm. but to attain global relevance and to put Africa in the map. Yes, right. But at the same time, too, we just can't do that, right? These people are already advanced than us. They have had this knowledge already. They have gone through the rigor and all that they went through to put this in place. And in fact, their results are showing that yes, they are really ahead. So it is wisdom to humble yourself, learn from them, take what you learn and implement it back home and now push the African culture and what you have to offer out there for them to see. But if I was doing that, what we are pushing would just look like nuisance because we are, we are just way um, behind. So yeah, that is really um, a good way to go about it. Then to get people to read, honestly, it's not easy because I had lots of backlash, especially mm. from young people here, here in Nigeria. Mm. Yes, all the motivational speakers, <laughs> all right, and, and all that. So I remember someone told me that it's not by reading, it's by so this this these are my classmates that I was trying to help, and they're making a mockery of me on the whole stuff. So it's not as if I was trying to be arrogant, but I was practical. I said, okay, fine. Don't read for the next five years. And let me read for the next five years. And when we meet, let's have this discussion. Okay. And um, five years have not even reached up to now. Yeah. But I've been privileged to meet some of them. And the gap, it's so clear. It's why. And even one of them was humble enough to tell me that, look, okay, He's, he was wrong. He's willing to, willing to get it right now. 
So is 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 that easy, right? You have to get them to understand the why. Okay, look, right? This is where you are. This is what you are doing. So when you understand why you should do this, right? And you show them how they can go about it. It might be slow, but those who really want to grow will take interest in it. So that's why we always expand on the why. Okay, this is why you should read. We're not reading here just for fun because yeah, we are a dust club, but we don't just read all books. We encourage reading, but our books are tailored based, based on the kind of just want to achieve. So show them the yeah. why. Okay, you should do this because of this. Look, you are you are like you're not okay. We need help. All right. And this is why you should read. Then when we do that, we spark their interest. And to now maintain that interest, which is the hardest part, is now show yeah. them. This is how you can go about it, right? Um, you have to take it easy, set time in a day where you read. You can start with five pages, all right? Mm. Don't try to run it, all right? While, while you read, go online and listen to audio books or listen to, to the, in, the author being interviewed. It makes the book yes. become more alive to you. And exactly. the power of community, you know, the, the fear of missing out syndrome. Mm. So when you see others reading and posting their reviews, because you get them to, to share their reviews once they read. Okay. I have seen that happening. By default, they are fully left out. Oh, I have to read. Okay. And once they start reading, they're like, wow, this is amazing. I've missed out on a whole lot. If I do one word of recent, the book Think and Glorish by Napoleon Hill. Oh, very good. Two months. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had three testimonies that really touched me on our on our, our Twitter space. Oh, one share, was, was a young man who was doing his business and he was struggling. And he needed to leverage on networks, but he didn't know how to go about it. And when he read the book, he it changed his mindset. He now yeah. programmed his Ma mastermind, mind. mastermind, yeah, concept, yes, exactly, yes, yes sure, yeah. And uh, you know, he started posting on his room that I meet people that will help me to very scale good Af said, affirmations, affirmations, and all that. And he said in that same week. Was able to meet some contacts that came through for him, and that one was like he was working in an office space that was not okay for him, and um, he had to change it. But he didn't, he didn't know how to go about it. He said he started visualizing himself. Yeah, visualizing. In his office space. Yeah, he was doing that consistently every morning, and he said just like joke, he went to an office. They just saw him. They asked him. That team office is like where do you work? Say he worked here. And uh, without any interview, he was just Give it. giving the job offer in that office that he was dreaming himself or seeing himself working in. And he was so shocked. So <laughs> these things are things that are applicable for, for we to use for our advantage. But people mm. don't see it because they don't, they don't read. Even I myself, I, I have my own testimony. That, 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 please that is, that share, is, please. That is a brother who always wanted to start off for a long time. I've been processing it here and there, you know, the phones and all that. But I had to just write it down on my paper and place it on my wall. I was doing it every day. I had to take out time to visualize it. And this week or next week, I'll be launching that brand that I've been planning for wow. quite some time now. So these are practical knowledge. There, there are so many of them, okay? But when this was actually testimonials about all this, people get encouraged, wow. And they start reading. So it hasn't been an easy route because even though we are over 5,000, to be honest, not all get to read. Some are just yes. there because they're just enjoying the company that they are in the reader's club, per se. Mm. But we mm. keep pushing and keep pushing. Uh, because my team of volunteers have been doing amazing well with me. And we are getting there already. We are seeing the results. And we are happy with where um, the whole vision is taking yes. us to. Yes. Wow. You guys are doing a fantastic yeah, job. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> wow. See, yes, um, it's, it's good that uh, members in your, your, in your club are posting their, their reviews, okay? And you are, you, are, you, are, you are correct. That encourages others to also read and post their reviews. You have a good uh, strategy to encourage people to, to, to do the work. Wow. Daniel, 
See, uh, I know that uh, there are other challenges we have in Africa, okay? Reading is a big one, okay? But I, I also want you to talk about any other challenges you see us facing in, in Africa. What other big challenges do you see us uh, in Africa facing as we, we try to develop our, co our continent? Wow, um, that is really a deep question that I've been of utmost concern to me and my tribe at the same time. A tribe in the sense of people like uh, Max and other of my tribe members. These are things mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. real I, 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 I see, I ask this question to any everybody I, I, I have on this podcast and I ask uh, uh, Abel, you know, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's a, he's a member of your tribe. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Amazing. Yeah. And it's really is, it's not easy to be frank because um, even though we are not out there yet, um, out of, of, the, of the country per se, but already we know what is not and what should be already. And due to that, there is not much enabling environments. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Although I all lost right. you for, for a few seconds, but yeah, we're, we're back. Okay, all right. So there is not an enabling environment for people to thrive. So, so at this point in the digital space, where the world is going digital at a high rate, over here in Nigeria, we are still so much struggling for data. So mm. you have online meeting, online conferences. Yeah. Even if it's free, but people are like, oh, I don't have data, 5 yeah. MB, 10 MB. You know, we data over here is in megabytes. You have to, to, to subscribe in this tiny byte to have, you know, stuff. And some of us are struggling with basic things as, as this. So the feel is it's all cheap to not to have data, but it's not. Yeah. Data yeah. should be should not be an issue at all in, in any country. Yeah. But it's a serious challenge here to many. And yeah. also apart from that, um, even though we try to help people to think outside the you know formal school setting, but at the same time too, the school setting in Africa really plays a long role to why we are still where we are today. Yeah. Because the our course curriculum, what we study, is still archaic. There is there is no advancement, there is not improvement. The same notepad, the, the same um, handouts that uh, some of our fathers used 10 <laughs> to 15 years ago in the university are still the same thing that is still there, no improvements. Yeah. Even in the range of courses, people are just kind of limited to certain kind of course. So if, if it's not in accounting, it has to be economics or uh, mechanical engineering or medicine, you know, or law. These are the probably 10 major yeah. courses that, you know, we are limited. So meanwhile, there is so many range of options. I was yeah. telling someone that if I could rewind back time, okay, the course I studied might not be what I'm going to study. Even though I, I did the course so well because of my heart to, but my choice was limited because that was all the school could offer. This is what we do. Yeah. So these are some of the issues that we face. We've seen people who have nothing to do with things like law, studying law, because that is all they could reach. People who are creatives, who should do so well in other fields, have to just force themselves to learn what the system is offering them to learn. Meanwhile, they would end up being fulfilled and all that. So these are some of the factors in Africa yes. that is really taking us back. But I will all link everything to steal the knowledge factor because if people would get knowledge, they would develop um, persistence, right? To keep on pushing. Yeah. Despite the resisting feedback we are, we are getting. Because we're only forced to be here. There are many that have been here and have gone ahead. Even you, as an example, you were once in these shoes. But look, look at it, right? So you have to keep pushing it. Yes, it's, it's not for us to express resistance. Once you have knowledge and you are deliberate as to what you want, you have the willpower to keep on pushing 
against all odds. Yeah. I just as we did to have this meeting, you know, we know what happened. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, for to be here, but you know, because of the willpower pushing, pushing, see how this happen. So that ability to push is what most of them are lacking because mm. they don't see the need to, they don't go for knowledge. But when they start reading and you know, see others, right? They watch videos on YouTube, they are reading biographies, watching documentaries, it does something to the mind that okay, I'm lacking. Mind. And where I am is not normal. I have to do something extra to be ahead. And that is where everything will start playing into being. Those who don't have data would go out of their way to, to, to subscribe, to get it, and to use it effectively, right? So they now grow their finance, and it won't be an issue on their part again. Those who don't have a good phone would, would press towards it and ensure that they get one because of what they have in mind. And as time goes on, all these basic little problem will be taken care of naturally, even while they are still over here in Nigeria and are thinking at the global space entirely. So for example, now I'm bringing it over to my, to my, to my space now. Uh, when I was starting out in the digital space, there were so many limitations here and there. Now, even though I'm yet to even launch my brand, but so far I, I, I work with international brands, you know, some in UK, some in US, Right from, from my base here, yeah. I don't have to tell them that, okay, there was no light, so we couldn't get this done, or there was no data, you know? I just try to create a system that takes care of all these things. But if I haven't been exposed myself to knowledge, to read books by Brian Tracy, books like No, no Excuses, yeah. I wouldn't have been thinking that way. I'll be yeah. like, I'll keep on blaming circumstances. I'll keep on blaming the government. I keep on blaming the schools. I was even blame God, blame my friends. Keep on playing the big game. Okay. But this um, knowledge about playing the, the blame game, you have to take full, um, full duty of all your action and give yourself the right mindset. So these are the things that we see in the book. I think people would expose themselves to wow wow okay hello yeah, yeah i'm here i'm here uh i'm lost yeah or i lost him <laughs> yeah no no, no. Yeah, no well, you're here yeah. although we had uh some some uh audio difficulties but I get, I guess what you're saying. You see, uh, yes, there are challenges. We all know, like you talk about. We, as we're doing this, we have challenges, data uh, connectivity. Okay, yes, yeah. But like you said, even with the challenges, if you continue, if we continue pushing, and and as individuals. If we continue working towards what we want, you see, it's it's important, like like you mentioned, you need to know what you want, and you need you need to be be ready to push for it. See, one thing that we as individuals don't do, we don't focus. We we'll go here. We run here, we run here, we run here. At the end of the day, we don't achieve anything. Okay, yes, we need to focus on one thing at a time, mainly because we have limited resources to focus on multiple things. So if somebody needs uh, your image, yeah, if, if somebody needs a phone, like you mentioned, then the person needs to focus to get the phone before before something something else. Okay, yeah, it's it's very important. Now, you you focus at the end of the uh, in the from the middle of your of your talk your your comment, you focus on individual responsibility. 
Okay. Mm. See, I am on that bandwagon. Okay. Individual responsibility. See, we, we blame everybody around us for not achieving the things we want to achieve. Mm. Now, I'm not saying those people don't have some measure of responsibility, like the government, okay? They have a measure of, of, of responsibility, but if I want something in my life, I'm, I need to own that thing totally, okay? So that even if the, 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 the people who should have created the circumstances to enable those things, do not do their own job, yes, it will be harder for me, but then I still need to push. I still need to take responsibility to achieve that goal. And mm. if you focus on it, if we first take the responsibility, somehow, somehow we'll find people around us who can help us achieve it. Mm. Okay. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's, it's hard. Okay. Mm. But if you read the story of the most successful people in the world, the people who created this world we live in today, mm. this is the process they went through. Okay. The more we read about those accounts, the, those biography accounts of those who created, who, who achieved things that created, that built the it world we live in today, we now mm. understand, okay, so if I want to do something in Africa, yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's, it's horrible, but... I can't give up. I need to continue so that mm. something will happen. I, I agree with, with you totally. You know, I agree with you totally. Mm. Mm. Sure, sure. Yes, because, you know, the thing is, right? In fact, it's, the game becomes interesting when there is resistance. It will be boring if there's no resistance. Oh, yeah. Game okay. Against all odds, you did this. That is what made the story interesting. Against all odds, you are able to come through. So, in fact, to be frank, even though we, I, I complain, you know, not complain, but the Nigerian issue at times very deep to my heart. But mm. I've trained myself to, you know, take charge of my atmosphere and not to give in to it. But even at that, I'm still somehow happy that I'm here because. If I were to be maybe in a more comfortable environment, maybe I might not be doing what I'm doing today. So there, there is still miracle in the messes. And yeah. it makes the stories interesting. Against all odds, I came yeah. from, from a position that is still in the third world. We had an issue with, with light data, but I, I kept through and now I'm here effecting global change and I'm creating yeah. a system for others too. Yeah. Get yeah. So yeah, is is where, is where we are. But this come when we expose our mind to see that look, nobody is responsible apart from us. We are the one to take full charge responsibility over our outcome. Nothing less, nothing more. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh fortunately, it will be hard to sell to most people. Okay, but we don't need most people to buy into this thinking for us to develop Africa. We need maybe 20%, 30%, maybe mostly up, up to 40%, okay? Buying into the idea at different levels, okay? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do it, we'll do it, all right? So tell, tell me.
you as a young African, you are doing, maybe can I say you found your, your purpose to impact Africa in what you're doing, okay? So what advice do you have for all the young Africans? Because we need, to, we need them in their own spaces to also impact their communities. So what advice do you have for them? Mm. I so much love this question because it's the essence of what I do and what I'm doing, what I'm doing. Is so like I said, we are raising leaders in Africa, not yes. just members. So that was shows that we're raising people that will raise other people that will raise others more. So first yeah. of all, you have to believe that they have something to offer. That is the bedrock for everything. Some believe that they were destined to just be followers. We are all followers. I'm a follower up to this point, and I'm still leader. But some just believe that this leadership scene is for some selected few by fate. Mm. Right? They just, just keep following. So you have to first come to the point that no matter who they are, where they have been, they have something to offer, something that the world needs. That's why I love the saying of my Munros so much. He said the richest place of the world it's not the gold mines in South Africa, right? He said it is the graveyard because so many potential books that were never written, songs that were never heard, arts and businesses that were never started are all in the grave. These people, they were there, but they didn't know that there was something on their inside. Mm. And I even have a, a, a funny belief. You know, my funeral believes in the, in the, um, the saying, of dying MC, right? You know what he means by that? Um, hello, can you hear me? I can hear, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay, all right. My true belief in the concept of dying MC, okay? Although I have something contrary to that because okay. I don't believe that we as humans can really die MC. It's just that when age meets us, mm. we stop delivering. But what is in us is enough for tens and thousands of generations. Okay. If we still maintain this glow. So people still die with what with so many stuff, but at least they're able to impact the world to an extent before going. But some yeah. are just there and they're like, I'm just a, a, a school person. I also just have a career, have a, a, a decent pay, have children, married, and you know, just go through life like that. But they're not thinking of impact. And I always tell people that what makes us different from the animal kingdom is that if your mindset is in just in survival mode, you want to just walk so you could eat, then there are no difference from the normal animals. Well, that's what animal kingdom do. At every point, they're just in survival mode. Yeah. Let's see what we can eat now and get going. But humans, we are meant to thrive, not just to just survive. Yeah. We're meant to make an impact. So if where you are in your society, in your home, in your workplace, in your nation, your impact is not being felt. No one can look at you and say, because of you, I was inspired and I started doing this positively. Then you are not living. Everyone is a leader. Leadership is a call that I've been calling everyone, waiting for who would answer it. Mm -hmm. A mm. uh, 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 leader's born, a uh, leader's made. That question is relevant. Everybody is made to be a leader. That is how you're meant to be. So that's to first of all believe, look inward and see that they have something to offer. Once yeah. they have conquered and have that belief, next step is to now discover what, okay, their interest is. And it's not always hard as you're trying to be because in discovering, most young people make a mistake of, okay, I don't know what I want to be. So let me keep waiting till I know. So that trying to play safe. Yeah. But the best way to discover yourself is by just starting out. Don't try Woo! to be careful. Fantastic. Just start, whatever it is. As you are in search of purpose, purpose will find you. But you don't just sit down and just wait and say, okay, let me keep waiting till I know what I'm called to do. Just start. Learn a musical instrument. Join a, 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 a volunteer somewhere. Join a, a great course. Just start. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to be sure at first. Just start. It's what is needed. And while you are in the process, you will now begin to understand yourself more and see where your strength is. Also, that discover where your strength is. The next step is to now prune that thing. Because gold in its own refined form does not have much value. 
or it is refined. Okay, mm. this is where I'm at. I've seen where I want to play in. I want to play in this industry. I want to play in this niche. You now take the time to refine it. This is where discipline comes in. I'm not there yet, but every day I, I try my best to give four hours to learning. I don't always wow. get that straight. I, I'm still trying to build that structure, but that is my goal every day, to spend at least four hours just in learning so I can prune what I have discovered, this thing that I've seen. Let me prune it with excellence. Very important. Because no matter what it is, for it to be said to the world, there have to be excellence. And that's what we are lacking most of the time. Take for our instance, all right? I'm happy with my background. But the is that I'm not waiting for it to get perfect before I yeah. begin, right? I'm, I'm working towards it. I believe next time I'll be in a better workspace. with Exactly, better exactly, yes. That. But at least I have this in mind. I'm not satisfied with where I am at this moment. So once we take us there, it's not us that we know, but we have known it, we have proven it, and we have packaged it with excellence. We have gone through the rigor of doing what needs to be done. Because no matter how valuable your content is, if you don't have some basics like camera, lightning, nobody will listen to you YouTube or on, on YouTube. Yeah. Even, even the yeah. they won't even propose what they are doing. So that yeah. excellent factor is needed. And most Africans are failing in that part because we're like, okay, let's just get started and all that and they remain where they are. So you, you discover yourself, you prune what you have seen about yourself and um, you stay on it and you now package it with excellence. Why that that is being done, you are on the move. You, are always, you always have the big picture in mind. And once that happens, even God himself would ensure that the universe aligns and bring all that you have into favor and everything will start being in place. That someone will look at you and say, hey, you will inspire me. Now, to me, before, whenever I, I hear that, I do feel like, wow. But now, it's just normal. You know, at times I walk into places and people that I don't even know just meet me and like, hey, I'm your club. I'm like, wow. Like, don't just to see me and take with me pictures that I inspire them, that they, that, that, that would, even though they are ghost members, but they are following all through, you know, it's, it's normal to me that people see me as a source of inspiration. But I didn't just get here. I had to just start, even when I was not, I was not sure. I have yeah. to start, even when it was looking odd to start. You know, I have to pay deaf ears to critics because these are not yeah, people are to push it. You know, once you are in the midst of people who are uh, mediocre and are trying to make that move by default they will try to pull you down they'll try to talk you out of it and funny enough is sadly that this might even come from pastors per se they'll be like yeah. hey you're doing too much just wait wait when is your time you know things like this looks innocent but it's time people down i'm like wait when is your time you don't have to force things out and i'm like what i'm a young man what time am i waiting for <laughs> if not now Right, it comes from their parents. I just calm down, you know, just wait for, just go to school and all that. So people, it comes from their friends, and so you have to, to develop the a hard heart to pay yeah. deaf ears to these things and just pursue a course because those people who are trying to stop you now will be the same ones that will say, "Hey, I'm proud of him. I've always known that he'll be great." I'll be like, "Wow!" <laughs> when I tried, because I had them enough in my life, people who try to stop me. And now they are blaming my trumpet everywhere that this guy, I've always known that he'll be great and all that. And I'll be like, what if I've listened to you? I say to my mind, yeah, what if yeah. I listen to your advice? You think I'll be here? Many have yeah. many are, are victims of people's opinion. And I always tell people, don't be too loyal to somebody's else's opinion at the expense of your destiny. It's oh, very, yeah. it's, it's very vital. Oh, so yeah. They should put their fears to thrift to critics and just push on, and even the sky will be too small to be their limits. Wow. Daniel. Wow. <laughs> yes. Woo! Uh, see, I, see I, 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 I tell you, I tell you, I'm, I'm happy. See, when I, when I meet young Africans like you, I'm very happy, and uh, I... I've met so many like you as guests of this podcast, you see. And uh, 
I'm certain that uh, Africa will get to where where we all wanted to get to because of mm. people like you. See, I will say this again. Uh, I've said it many, many times on this podcast. Uh, people of my generation filled Africa. Okay. Uh, because uh, we also had opportunities to do the things a young man like you and others, young men and women of Africa in this era are doing. We also had the opportunities, yes. Uh, yes, uh, in our era, we didn't have a social media, okay? Uh, internet, okay? But in our own way, we also had so many opportunities, which we didn't take. Many of us, uh, focus on our personal careers, okay, mm. which in, in a way it's, it was limited because it was always focused on us, on us alone, okay. Mm. It wasn't focused on impact of the wider community. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to see people like you. So, you so uh, much, yeah, yeah. So let 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 me ask you my last question. What is your vision of Africa in the next uh, twenty to thirty years time? My vision for Africa in the next 20 to 30 years time. First of all, I'm very optimistic of where Africa will be okay. in the next 20 to 30 years time. I'm so optimistic about it. I see Africa, okay, and I'm, I'm playing my part towards this vision. Yeah. But I see wow. Africa not being participants but also being key players in leading sectors like the digital space. Okay. In fact, even in the religious space, it's happening already. In the leadership space, right? And even in the political space, I see Africa not just being benefactors, but being key players that people would have to draw resources from Africa. Other nations, you have to draw resources, wisdom. They would always have to get us here and kidnap us and take us to, to where they are. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be so mobile. I must say we'll just be in one spot. But at the same time, so we'll do things that will bring them back home for them to benefit from the riches in Africa. And I'm glad to, to play a major part in that because all this won't happen without knowledge. But for what is happening, um, I, must, I must say, even though it has been a struggle to get people to read, but what is happening lately with all the trends, knowledge is now, there's now a area working of knowledge with the AI technology, okay, with um, YouTube and other, like people are beginning to get interest in this thing. Now, some of yeah. them are doing it to just earn a living. But at mm. the same time too, it is now like, requisite that you get knowledge because it is now almost clear to most people that the school yeah. system is not all there is to life. So due to the pressure in Africa, people are now going out of their way to get knowledge in, in the tech industry, yes. in the leadership space, in different space. That is for survival, but while doing that, it, there's already a change already in their thinking process that, wow, so I can be more. And it's coming more intense. So the government, I can't really say for how the government of Nigeria will be in the next 20 years, if I'll be honest. <laughs> because personally, I'll just focus my search light on personal leadership and not political leadership. Yeah. But so long as the personal leadership 20, 30 years, I'm very optimistic that Africa won't just be benefactors, but will be key players in leading industries 
in the globe. That's for sure is going to happen. Uh, coming from you, I believe that. Okay, I believe that. And uh, I will tell you, I'm so happy to have spoken to you today. I'm very, very happy. Uh, yes, as I'm trying to encourage more young people to read, I would take your advice, okay? All the things you have shared with us today. Uh, and I will reach out to you from time to time, okay? Uh, because, hey, uh, you are doing something I couldn't do, okay? I'm telling you, you are doing something I haven't been able to do. So I need to learn from you, all right? Uh, uh, I need to tell you, thank you very much for being a great guest of the Think B, Think B for Africa podcast. Yeah. Wow. And thank you so much for such amazing platform. Trust me, I'm going to spread this good news. I will spread the gospel that you all have to go to Think Big and listen to podcasts. I will sure do that. Sure, I will show you that. I'm really amazed the platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>